Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, if you watched the last video, the last one what we did, uh, we created one Azure Functions within Azure app, Function App Container and then we created a HTTP take trigger. And what we did, anytime somebody was triggering that function, we created a queue and we send that queue to a Azure Queue Store. Okay, and we've reviewed how to do that. And this time we are just going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to start with an Azure storage. So in this time, if we if I get a message to the Azure queue, I want to call or execute a function. So it's the complete opposite is what we're going to do in this lab. So for this lab, I'm going to follow the documentation from official Microsoft documentation. Uh, again, when we follow, we do not completely exactly follow every step by step but overall in general this is what we we follow so I usually uh, add this link in my video for your further review and stuff so I'll give that to you once I post the video so in this one pretty QC series only have one uh, you need a free account you gotta have an account or you can create one free account uh, so here so you need a function app that is what we are going to call when there is something going on with our message queue in a, within our Azure storage account, okay? So, uh, let's get started with this one, okay? I'm just gonna use a different user group because I probably already have a resource group up by that name. So let's go to resource groups. And here I do have a resource group, so what I'll do, uh, we'll start the lab by creating function app. So to create function app, all I do, I always, this is what I do, I come and type whatever I need to create and I just click on it. And it is going to give me this blade. I'm going to click add and it should give me a very familiar interface. Uh, let me create a new test group, uh, call it Q, uh, just call it Q to function. Okay, that's what we want to achieve. So that's going to be our resource group name. Function group name, we can say the same thing. Let's see if that's available. That is available. We're going to use code uh, to publish uh, uh, for, for our publish option. Runtime stack, we're going to use .NET Core, the default version 3.1 is good, region, I'm, I don't need to change anything. Come to hosting, uh, here is my storage account, so let's go back and, and see exactly what they're saying. Global Ulic, now we have done that, we're publishing this as code, this is good. Uh, runtime stack, we, need, we have used .NET Core, choose the version number, so anything is, should be good. Region, we have done, so up to this point we are good. For storage account, uh, we just need another new and it's already creating a unique name for us so we don't need to do anything. We are going to use a Windows system and plan, there are three different plans that you can choose. One is the consumption premium app service plan. We are going to stick to the consumption plan which is serverless. So if you go say for example app service plan you will have to actually have to purchase this particular dedicated SKU so that would not be a true uh, serverless computing anymore. So I'm going to choose the consumption or service based plan or serverless plan and go to the next monitoring and typically you would like to enable this one and use a new application insights for your purpose. So let me make sure that also makes sense. Uh, consumption plan monitoring default so default is good and so at this time we're ready to create the application uh, add tags not required so as soon as the validation is done we are going to create this particular function app and let's hit create for that so there we go so it's now creating this uh, function app container for us that we can use and we are going to add some container as soon as this deployment is done uh, so over here uh, what we will do we'll go down to the function blade and we are uh, going to add 
uh, Azure Q storage trigger. So this trigger we have not worked uh, so far. So we have worked with the HTTP trigger. We have worked with the timer trigger in last couple of videos. And in this one, we're going to work with the Azure Q storage trigger. Okay. So by this time, I expect this to be almost done. Uh, it's getting there. It looks like it's got the storage account, uh, some components, and uh, it's just going on just fine. I uh, usually take just a minute. So let's just go ahead over here and still can kind of review what else we need to do. So this is the way you're going to configure. I'm going to name something. Q trigger one is the default. You can keep that one. Q name would show up. You can keep that one as well. Uh, storage account connection as your web dev storage is the default and that default so far it's been working for me just fine so I would not change that one and uh, here you can use storage account connection already being used by your function app or you can create a new one uh, and once that's uh, there uh, we will create our function so now what next we need to do we need to create a queue and to create the queue uh, what you need to do you need to go back to your storage uh, resource group from the resource group you need to find your storage account on that storage account you have to go to your queue services and then you need to add a queue and we're gonna call that queue as my queue items and then we'll hit create okay and if you come over here you see that over here when we are during when we are creating our function function then we said my queue name is going to be my queue dash items they are matching so now go back as i said this is now done so let's just perform those steps so here first thing uh, go to go to functions and then add functions you will have a whole bunch of templates available we have worked with this to trigger before timer before let's work with the is your Q storage trigger okay let's click on that one and Q trigger one my Q item and Azure web job storage they're all good to me so I'm just gonna create a hit create it should create a function for us okay so once this function is done that looks good and you can come over here um, and uh, that's about it so my queue item that's all it's gonna do but we need to create the queue so let's just copy uh, where is that go back and uh, go back to the resource group is where we want to go back so queue trigger we are there we are here we are gonna go there go to res resource overview and the resource group should show up right there so this is my resource group and in this resource group this is my storage account and in the storage account you should have from the overview we'll four few blocks of main different services one two three four queue is what we want and here we just need to create a new queue and we gotta call it uh, my queue items okay so let's just copy that one and say my queue items and hit OK and uh, okay there we go my queue item so we got everything that we need uh, to test our application at this time I believe so let's go so let's uh, uh, test the application so now we can go and uh, go to the uh, application again so go back to your home uh, you can click for or just look at what you have here. This is the function that you created. Uh, go for the functions, and there's only there should be only one function. That's the that's the one we created. And uh, what we want to do, um, we want to code and test. And here, what we want to do, we want to test and run okay so that let's see how they're testing over here back in the azure portal browse uh, expand the logs button so that we have done in a separate browser window go to your resource group and azure portal and select the storage account in the queue then uh, select the my queue container and add 
message and type hello world in the message box okay so here we are, we are doing it backwards okay so since the function will run so our testing will be on the container side so let's open up another tab okay so let's go back to our storage account let it come go to your resource group okay go to your storage account and in this storage account if we add uh, something a queue a message then the function app should execute itself so let's come over here add a message and say hello world and then I'm gonna hit OK all right nothing showed up in here and let's go back over here and let's see how they are doing the testing okay here hit OK wait for a few seconds and go back to the function logs and verify that the new message has been read from the queue so over here we just need to go back to say overview and uh, go test let's see if it's in here here's the logs I'm gonna I'm gonna add one more message in there okay okay now there is something in here it showed up come over here ah there we go so it triggered something okay as soon as we did this this is the trigger that we got uh, 2429 that's thing 2028 20, 20, 20, 18 that is the executing function q dot trigger one reason new q message detected on my q items okay so and here the function C sharp Q trigger function processed hello world so this function that you have over here you can have your own complicated logic in here that will take the queue and start processing so let's do it one more time okay let's add one more message in here with something else say hello function app and then hit OK and now we got another message in my queue hello function app let's go over here and look at that executor trigger succeeded and this time it has processed a new trigger which is uh, based on the hello function app and that's the message that we have given in here right so if you refresh this it's gone uh, since this message is now being processed all right so that's how easy it is to configure the function app and do interesting things uh, with it so that's about it so I'm gonna give you this uh, link and if you're not using anything just make sure that you're deleting your resources to save some cost uh, especially if you have a free account and if you like the video uh, just give me a thumbs up please subscribe and share with your friends leave your valuable comments if you're studying for the exam good luck thank you